Hey, what's going on guys? Time for a battle box. As I stand outside, leaves falling today. Brisk air, Halloween's on the way. I have to say, I love fall. Fall's awesome. I used to always love Christmas. That was my time of the year. Snow, Christmas, that was cool. The older I get, the more I like fall. Still love Christmas though. Anyway, so, we got a battle box. Today's little EDC. I'm gonna do a separate video on this. This is the Ace Nibbler. I'm not really a fan, and we'll talk about that in a future video. But for now, keep using it. Cut a little tape off the box. Hopefully these squirrels don't throw too many acorns at me. They tend to do that this time of year. I mean, naturally they're falling off the trees, of course, but I'm telling you, it's not a conspiracy. I've seen the squirrels pick them up and throw them. So anyway, <laughs> here we go. Mission Brief 104. All right, do a quick flip. You guys can read that right there. And we're gonna keep that handy so I can reference it in case I don't know what I'm looking at, which I usually don't. So where do we start? Let's get rid of that. Let's see, what's this? We have Mount Ops Hydrate Enhanced Hydration. 20 on the go packs, lemon flavor. All right, so electrolyte drink mix. Simple, lemon mix, you know, lemon drink. Um, manufactured in the USA with quality ingredients sourced worldwide. Mm, and what's to know? I can't taste it right now. I'm sure it tastes like lemon. Gives you electrolytes. And here's the thing I will I will mention. I know plenty of people who uh, who like to stay hydrated, and they're drinking electrolytes and stuff, and they're adding that actually into their their water and beverages. But you don't really need it unless you go in the gym or working out or you know sweating a lot. You don't need to replenish your electrolytes. Just saying. It's a good thing to do, but a lot of times, you know, you're getting drinks, drinks and different mixes and stuff, and it's just, it's not really necessary. But hey, I'm no doctor, so don't listen to me. All right, what else do we have? Oh, I see a book on the bottom. I'm a huge fan of the Field and Stream books. But first, why is this red light on? Hybrid light, bright thinking. The Atlas 600 lantern and charger, hybrid solar, adjustable 600 lumen lantern. That would be why. Maybe it's picking up the sunlight out here oh duh <laughs> okay so huge solar panel on top so we'll turn that on very cool low medium high real straightforward solar panel well, obviously it works it's unless the battery I mean I have to look at the instructions but because that's lit I'm assuming it is picking up light sometimes on cheap products not saying this is cheap at all um, but sometimes like especially super super cheap like, I don't know, battery packs and stuff. I've literally seen solar solar panels that were stickers. It has nothing to do with this. I'm just saying in general. So you have to check to see if this stuff actually works. Anything that's solar powered or claims to be solar powered, I literally leave outside in the sun to see if it actually charges. Because I'm always curious if it works or not. But yeah, I mean, lanterns will always be... Oh, is there a strobe? Not strobe, but uh, SOS maybe? No. Which seems like slow blinking strobe. What did I do? Let's see. One, two, three. Oh, so I, I did too fast. So double tap. Let's try triple tap. Does nothing. All right. So double tap does that slow beacon. All right. Let's put that off to the side. We have looks like 30% uh, off. Same thing. Same company. It is code HLBB30. 30% off site-wide yeah we've got a couple products in them i actually use that camping quite a bit and then we got the lantern pretty neat all right so and we have another thing from hyperlight the journey 700 700 lumen hybrid solar flashlight and charger so we have a solar panel on the side on this one push this through the package yes i can huh, huh. low and high looks like yeah, I mean, it's actually works. I'll have to test this out. If you notice, this one has that red light on constantly. Not sure why. However, this one, the solar panel is exposed. I do not see a light, so I have to investigate that and see why. Um, yeah, and charger. So that's pretty cool. Obviously, that I've seen that quite a bit now where there's flashlights that are also um, power stations. You know dual purpose that's cool the flashlight you know obviously could be used in an emergency but also you know we all have cell phones it's good to have a couple different forms of uh, power to charge up your cell phones in an emergency we all rely on our cell phones 
I mean, think about it. Think about it if you left the house right now and you went out about your day, no cell phone. Obviously, you're not going to be playing around on Instagram and Facebook and reading emails and stuff like that. But, you know, do you need your cell phone for communication throughout your day? Do you have to talk to certain people? Is it important? You know, or is it just all for fun? You got to have uh, ways to keep that charged in case of emergency. All right. So what is this? This fell off of something. It fell off of this. That looks intense. So tree free fire. So this is going to be one of those things where you get a fire going and then you cap it off and you can reuse it because that would be cool. Looks like there's these little, I just broke one off an accident. These are just cuts in there. So I guess they leave spots to, uh, you know, work like wicks. Interesting. So let's see. All natural portable campfire, easy, safe, scentless. TreeTreeFire.com, probably made in Maine since 2020. Fascinating. Looks like some kind of, I don't know, stacked burlap or something. Obviously, we have wax, some form of wax, and we have these little, like, square pillars that work like, you know, um, wicks, I, I suppose. I don't know. I have to investigate that more. But, yeah, fire. Fire is always good. Another way to make fire. All right, what is this? Uberleben. Now, I got a, uh, a cup, one of those wood carved out cups from Uberleben, and I used that on my last camping trip, and I liked it quite a bit. It was just kind of fun. I have plenty of cups. I didn't need a wood one, but it's just made it more fun. I don't know why. So what is this? Kessel Stainless Pot. All right, let's check this out. I like the bag. Oh, man, I love... I love that like kind of wax canvas. I don't know why. All right, we have a really sweet little bag here. Oh, this is definitely gonna go into the camp kit. I dig it. A nice uh, pot lid with a, uh, a wood handle, which is nice. So it'll stay cool. We have our handle. Sorry for the headphone users. That probably sounded pretty loud. You know, I never use headphones for anything, ever. I just don't like headphones, so I don't know if you know that about me. So hang on, let me get this garbage out of the way. Yeah, I'm not a fan of uh, headphones, so I never use them. So even my own videos, I have no idea what they sound like with headphones. Oh, cool. So there's a little screw system here, looks like, for the pot. All right, I just screwed that on. I don't know if that's even how it goes on there. I <laughs> just undid the, uh, the screw, tightened it on there. Seems like it would work fine. But yeah, I'll probably, probably put it on wrong. We'll see. A little pour spout. Really straightforward, really simple. I do like that cap. Not only does it have some vent holes on here, but obviously the pour spout does give it a little bit more of that airflow for all that steam and stuff to come out. But I do like the big oversized wood knob, which I'm assuming, yeah, I can kind of loosen that. I'm not going to take it out because obviously there's no exposed screw or anything like that. So I'm not sure if there's like a post. Well, you know what? Let's just see do this for the sake of science okay so it's encaptured so you're not gonna lose it or anything like that there's a obviously a little threaded piece on the inside of the wood so you can take that off if you wanted to for some reason maybe clean it underneath or something or if it broke maybe replace it but yeah so it goes on nice and tight got a little top kind of cool i dig it all right so let's put that off the side for a second the wind is picking up and it is freaking cold. I didn't wear a jacket out here. I do have a sweatsuit, but it's a little cold for that. What is this? Um, this is for that, that fire thing. For outdoor use only with adult supervision, prior to lighting, place your fire on a heat-resistant, non-burnable surface and completely remove the outer wrapping from fire tin. Light your fire by touching a grill lighter to the corner of each briquette until lit. Do not attempt to pick up your fire after lighting. Uh, the tin will be very hot. Extinguish by sliding lid loosely over the top of the flame, allowing uh, to cool before securing lid or uh, handling container. Never extinguish your water or use in the rain. Stop use and discard when one fourth of the wax remains. So that is for, for this thing. And again, the idea is that you can use this over and over again. So you put this under your, you know, you build your little fire, you put this underneath it, you light it as when the fire is good to go, you'd use, you know, a stick or something to slide it out. And they're saying just to slip this over to extinguish the fire, not to use any water or anything. So 
interesting. I'll definitely play around with that. All right, so we have our book, which again, to me, are always super fun from Field and Stream. These are really nice heavy duty books. They got these little metal corners and everything. So this is the total camping manual. Plan perfect trips, sharpen your skills, recipes, fire tricks, family tips, and more. Very neat. Let's give a quick flip through here. All right, obviously all, you know, tons of pictures and stuff, and you can see the little tabs here, you know, broken down to categories. This is gearing up the green. Love seeing all the knives, all right. Yellow or gold here is essentials and skill, or essential skills, excuse me. Random stuff around the campfire. I love the fire stuff, a little fire bug. Cooking, a bunch of camp cooking stuff. That's pretty interesting. All right, whoops, what was red? Family camping, okay. And then uh, that's it, out there. So, very cool, definitely dig it. And it looks like we are left with the knife of the month from Holtzman's, all right. So say folding knife D2 steel blade tested for men, <laughs> gray and red. Tested for men, is that what that says? Let's let that focus. Made in China, you can clearly read that. All right, so let's see, what do we have here? Now, as far as this company goes, have had a, a few things from them in the past. And uh, I actually really like, they had a combo in a battle box that was like a survival type deal. They had the ferro rod on there. Uh, it was all matching G10. I thought that was actually really neat. So, let's check this out. We have a coupon code. Scan to get the discount. I don't know if you guys can scan your screen, but if you can, there you go. 25% off. Thank you for Holtzman. Clean cloth. Tool, pocket clip, some hardware. Interesting, we'll put all this stuff back in there. This is kind of different. This looks like it comes with a sharpening stone. And this is double-sided. We could tell there's a coarse side and a fine side. That's new, I haven't seen that before. All right, looks like just maybe just the carrying case, yeah. Seems like it, okay. Different uh, type case here with a strap. With that nice uh, soft lining so it doesn't get scratched up if you do care about scratches so nice packaging let's get that oil off the handles hang on a second just a quick quick little wipe down all right it is a uh, flipper looks like and we do have an entire blade coating so more oil hang on get that off of there I get the full look of the knife. I do appreciate oil. No problems with that at all. All right. So there she is. I like the gray. I like the red liners. That's cool. It's a liner lock D2. Open frame design. Um, pocket clip. I'm wondering because it's not really turned. Does they just give you a spare pocket clip? Or if it was a different style? Looks like uh, just a spare. Yeah, okay. Kind of cool. I mean, if you get expensive knives, that kind of makes sense. I don't know. A few people out there bend out or break their pocket clips. It'd always be nice to have an extra one. I think if Spyderco or Benchmade, <laughs> you know, send extra clips at every knife, that'd be uh, pretty nice of them. But anyway, um, let's see. Pretty comfortable. Not going to blow you away as far as uh, comfort goes. Um, you know, flipper works totally fine. Dual thumb stud, ambidextrous thumb studs. A quick little test in the pocket. I know you guys can't see this, but I'm just kind of curious. It is deep conceal clip. Clip's fine. Holds fine. Yeah, you know, it's a fine knife. It's not like, I don't know, particularly amazing in any way. Like I said, I'm fine with D2. There is different, you know, not all D2 is uh, create equal. CPM D2 is definitely not the same as d2 that is not what's in this blade but i just want to point that out for people who don't know but uh yeah i mean heat tree makes the world of a difference depends on who's who's doing the uh the steel i like the look of it and everything it just i mean it doesn't blow me away but it's not a uh super cheesy you know cheap knife either i know a lot of people aren't huge fans of liner locks but i never had a problem with them this one locks up absolutely perfectly so kind of cool I definitely dig the extra little sharpening stone, even though I don't need it. I have a million sharpening stones and sharpening 
you know, uh, systems and all that kind of stuff, but for an average person, this would make a nice gift, I would say. If you were a super, um, I don't know, dedicated knife collector, this probably won't bring, you know, a lot of joy into your life. You're not going to be blown away by it, but I have to say this would make an excellent gift for someone who maybe isn't super into knives. The presentation is fantastic. The accessories are really nice, the little pouch and everything, because they'll probably throw away the box. But you can keep the pouch, you know what I mean? Having the little sharpening stone is a bonus. So yeah, that's that. Let's pop this in there. All right, take a look at our paperwork real quick. Put everything back in the box. Definitely gonna check that fire. I may or may not do another video on that fire. Um, flashlights, always good funny i was just talking to my uh my parents not too long ago and i bring them flashlights all the time and they seem to uh lose the chargers and batteries and stuff like that so i have to i have to do a uh, an overhaul on the flashlight situation at my uh, my folks place but all right so i could tell you just i mean before we look at the paperwork here um i love the flashlights they're always awesome the pot is the most exciting to me and that fire uh, starter is interesting. It's not like super exciting. It's, uh, there's a million companies that make different types of fire starters like that where basically it's just a big base. You get a fire going, you pull it out, it's reusable for a certain amount of time. Uh, I don't know how well this is going to work. Like once it's burnt, you have to, you know, those little pillars, you'd have to recut them to get easy spots to, to light up again. I don't know. I got to play with it. We'll see. But anyway, let's look at this paperwork real quick. All right, so we have the uh, Mountain Ops Hydrate, the Lemon Electrolytes uh, Packets, um, the manual, the Total Camping Manual, uh, Tree Free Fire, which, you know, tree free, what, what does that mean? Yeah, I mean, the wood, your fire is trees, right? So I don't, I'm not really understanding the pitch there, I guess, because my knee-jerk reaction is, oh, wow, you saved the trees. <laughs> if you're making a fire, you're burning wood, aren't you? I don't know. I suppose if you're like a super hippy dippy, you'd buy a tree free fire starter and you'd only use dead wood that you find on the ground to recycle and save our wonderful planet. Um, then we have the uh, Uberleben Kessel Pot and Wax Canvas. This is my favorite thing, I have to say. This says mem uh, member recommended Jeff C., one of the, uh, I guess, members at uh, BattleBox recommends that. This is the, the most exciting for me. I can't wait to use that. I just think it's kind of cool. Uh, then we have the Hybrid Atlas 600, the Lantern. Well, actually, they show both here. The Lantern and the Flashlight is a combo. All right, that would be part of the Pro Box. And then, of course, Knife of the Month is the Holtzman's Clip Point Folding Pocket Knife. Um, just looking here real quick. 3.58 D2. 8.5 overall. Liner lock, yep, G10. So, no, uh, no surprises there. Oh, that's interesting. All right, so the Fine is 1,000 grit. And the course is 400 grit. You can see that in the picture there for that stone. So yeah, very cool. That is Mission Brief 104 of BattleBox. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. And I'll see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.